Hey everyone, this is Super Mario Logan, and today I'm doing a Draw My Life video. This is going to be a very long video, so let's get started. My name is Logan 30 Acre, and I was born on November 17th, 1994 in Pensacola, Florida. I have an older brother named Lance and a little sister named Haley, and when I was about three years old, my mom and dad got a divorce. See, my dad was a truck driver, so I never really saw him that much. But my mom met this new guy named Brian, and Brian became my stepdad, and Brian was super cool because he knew a lot about computers and video games and all this cool stuff, and Brian treated me and Lance like we were his own kids. He would play video games with us, and that's how I got introduced to Mario, so you can thank him for that. Now, I've had a lot of medical problems throughout my life. A lot of my fans know this, but what you probably don't know is that when I was about three years old, my brother Lance hit me in the head with a baseball bat. Now, I'm not just saying a little hit. He knocked me out. There was blood all over our playroom, and he ran to my mom and said, uh, mom, Mom, I accidentally killed Logan and my mom was like what so she picked me up and rushed me to the hospital and it turns out that Lance had fractured my skull he had hit me so hard that he actually cracked the side of my head and I know I did not get any brain damage I'm not stupid or retarded I but he did hit me so hard I think I forgot math because I'm really really bad at math and then, when I was in the third grade, I went to Louisiana for spring break to visit my cousins. And they had this huge pool, and I loved to swim, so I swam all day. But that was a bad idea, because there were millions and millions of mosquitoes all around the pool, and I got bit like 50 hundred times. And one specific mosquito was carrying this very, very deadly disease. And I was the unlucky one, and I got bit by this huge monster devil dragon mosquito. So I had all these bite marks all over me, and when I got back to Pensacola, my neck started to hurt really bad. Like, I could not not move my head without a sharp pain shooting down my spine and I said mom mom my neck hurts really bad and my mom's like uh you probably just slept on it wrong and I was like oh that makes sense until I started throwing up everywhere and felt like I was gonna die so my mom rushed me to the hospital and the doctor said you probably just have the flu or something on a scale to one to ten how bad do you feel and I said uh bleh and I threw up all over his stupid one to ten chart so they started doing all these tests and it turns out that I had West Nile virus and spinal meningitis now apparently this was a big deal because the doctors were freaking out they were like get an ambulance we got to transfer him to a bigger hospital and this was my first time in an ambulance they took me by ambulance to a bigger hospital so they could try to cure me so after about two weeks of being in the hospital, I was cured and everything was okay. And my mom bought me Super Smash Brothers for the GameCube to make up for me getting sick, I guess. Or it was a prize for not dying. I don't really know. But I love Super Smash Brothers for the GameCube. I played all the time with my brother and all my friends. And then after a while, I started getting really, really sick every time I would eat. Like, I couldn't eat anything without feeling like I was going to throw up. I stopped eating as much as I usually did, which was a lot. I could eat anything. I could eat a whole pizza. I could eat two double cheeseburgers. I loved to eat. So when I stopped eating, I lost a lot of weight. So I ended up seeing a doctor, and the doctor ran all these tests and didn't find anything wrong with me. So the doctor said, you must be faking it, or you just want attention. And my mom and Brian believed the doctor because, I mean, none of the tests came back with anything wrong. So when it came time to eat, I wasn't allowed to do anything until I ate all my food. I wasn't allowed to play any video games. I wasn't allowed to see my friends. I wasn't even allowed to watch TV. No one believed me that every time I would eat, I would get horribly sick. I had to start thinking of ways of hiding food so it looked like I, would, I was actually eating. I would roll up the food in a napkin and put it in my pockets, or I would take really, really big bites of food and say so I had to use the bathroom. I'd go in the bathroom and spit the food out in the toilet. Uh, yeah, this is what really happened, and this happened for years and years because no one would listen to me. No one believed me that I was sick. Now let's take a break from the medical problems and get into the YouTube part of my life. The medical problems will continue later. So I joined YouTube on December 8th, 2007, and I found out about YouTube while I was in the seventh grade. I remember I came home from school one day and Lance was telling me about how his friend joined this cool new website called YouTube and he was uploading videos and having so much fun. So I decided to give it a try, and I can't really explain what happened in my very first video, but I was trying to recreate the Super Mario Got Milk commercial from like the 1990s, and I told Lance and his friend Patrick to film me with my little Mario toy, and then complete randomness happened. And I remember I clicked upload, and within an hour, I had two views. I was like, oh my god, two views. I am famous. I, I am like Will Smith. I, people know me. I, I'm all around the world right now. 
but I probably got those two views from refreshing my own video page so many times. But I really thought it was cool and awesome how I could upload videos and people would actually see them. So I started making like eight videos a day. I was making the most random stupid videos ever. I ended up deleting most of my videos because I realized how dumb they were. So I decided to do videos of my little Mario wing plush doll and I would review video games and do a bunch of random stuff. I got a couple of subscribers and a few views, but I thought I was doing pretty good. Then I found this guy named Froggy Company. He made plush videos and he would make all these cool Mario freak out videos and I thought it was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. I loved his videos. I ended up messaging him and we became really good friends and he gave me tips on how to make better videos. And that's when I added Tony the Tiger and Shrek and Woody and all the characters you love today. And after I added all these new characters, my video views went up and I hit a thousand subscribers. I was like a thousand people, like that's so many people. And then I went and bought me a 12 set of Mario plushies for like $250. And I also bought a $150 flip video HD camera because I wanted my videos to be better quality. And I used all the money for my birthday and I just put it all towards YouTube because I really wanted my YouTube career to just, just to blow up. And I continue to make videos and make more friends on YouTube. Now at the time, it was just me and my brother Lance doing these plush videos. Lance did the voice of Shrek, Mr. Pig, and Woody, and I did the voice of Mario. Until I asked my friends Luke and Zeke to help out with my videos. Now before me, Luke, and Zeke did these plush videos, we would all go on crazy adventures with my Mario plushies. We really actually had a good time playing with these toys. And we were like, oh my god, what, what if we just filmed these cool, funny adventures we go on? Because if we're laughing at it, maybe other people will laugh at them too. So that's how the Mario and Luigi Stupid and Dumb Adventures series was born. We uh, filmed our stupid adventures that we would usually have in our minds and y'all ended up loving it and the series exploded and that's how Mama Luigi was born and that's why y'all are so addicted to Mama Luigi and y'all won't stop talking about Mama Luigi because y'all just loved it so much. So you can thank our stupid imaginations for that stupid character that y'all love so much. So now I have Lance, Luke, and Zeke helping me with my videos. Our video views exploded. We got thousands and thousands of subscribers. I got accepted into the YouTube Partner Program, which that was a very, very big deal. People loved us. I thought we were unstoppable. Until one day Luke and Zeke told me that they were moving away to Colorado. And I was like that's on the other side of the world. So now you can't help with videos anymore. So I said hey can we please do one more video to, to kill off Mama Luigi so people wouldn't wonder where he was. So that's what we did. We made that one last video where Mama Luigi died in an explosion and then all of y'all unsubscribed and hated me and I quit YouTube. Not really. Me and Lance continued to make videos even though Luke and Zeke moved away. And you know, people were always like, where's Mama Luigi? Where's Mama Luigi? And I had to let y'all know that uh, Zeke moved away. So if y'all want to know, Zeke voiced Mama Luigi. Luke played some of the characters too. And Luke and Zeke both moved away. So that is why Mama Luigi is not in my videos anymore. So stop yelling at me about it. So after Luke and Zeke left, I needed to find a new voice actor for my videos. I didn't want to have to make Lance do all the voices to all the characters, so I went around looking and I could not find anybody to help me. Until my sophomore year of high school, then I met Lavelle. Now Lavelle was this crazy kid in my reading class, and I thought he'd be the perfect fit for my videos. I went up and said, hey, you want to help me with my YouTube videos? And he said, sure, uh, can I record some of my rap songs at your house? And I said, uh, sure, that sounds gangsta or whatever y'all say, I don't know. And also during my sophomore years when I started dating my girlfriend Chili, who now helps me with my videos. But anyway, Lavelle started being in my videos, and some people loved it, and some people hated it. And then we added Bowser and Chef Pee Pee, and my videos blew up again, and people still cried about Mama Luigi, which made me really mad. So my YouTube was back on track and I was doing really good, but my health was doing really bad. See, I started feeling worse, I started losing more weight, and my doctor decided to put me on a feeding tube because he thought that would make me gain weight super fast. But he was super wrong. The feeding tube sucked. It hung off my stomach like I had a stupid squid tentacle. I looked like Gooper Blooper from Super Mario Sunshine. I had to be fed this milky jelly stuff and it got all hard and it would clog up the tube and we would have to flush it. The feedings would make me feel horribly, horribly sick and I would have these weird seizure things from the pain being so painful. While all this was happening, I was a junior in high school. I had to go to school with a feeding tube and it would poke out of my shirt and it would make me look like I had a stupid boner in class. And my school life had its ups and downs. I was the quiet kid. I didn't really talk that much and I kind of got bullied a lot. But that changed when I got into high school because you know everyone got kind of mature. But still I really wasn't the kid that like everyone knew and I, I only had my like little set of friends and I, I kind of stayed away from the big crowds. And the feeding tube didn't really help with making friends. It kind of made me look like I was some weird kid. And this feeding tube sucked really bad. It made me so sick I had to miss a month of school. I was actually thinking about killing myself because I was so sick. 
I didn't think there was a reason to live anymore because all I felt was pain and suffering. Even though I had a girlfriend, a family, and thousands of fans that loved and cared about me, I just didn't see a reason to move on in life. My mom noticed how much I hated life, so she said that I needed to see a more professional doctor. So I took a week off school and I went to Tulane Hospital in New Orleans. I was going to go see this professional god of a doctor named Dr. Hyman, and he was supposed to be the best doctor in the country, and he would fix my stomach problems once and for all. But that's not what happened. He was a horrible doctor. The only good thing he did was remove my feeding tube. But other than that, he kept me drugged up for a week and he ran tests on me that did not make any sense. And he made up a bunch of lies about how if I didn't stay in the hospital for six months under his care, that I would die. Me and my mom didn't believe any of the bullcrap this guy was saying. So we packed up our stuff and went back to Pensacola. And now we're back to where we started. I'm still really sick. And now I have a scar from my feeding tube. So now it looks like I have two belly buttons. After a while, my mom took me to see another doctor, and this doctor's name was Dr. Lewis. She was amazing. After the first appointment, she figured everything out. She found out that I had superior mesenteric artery syndrome. It's a very deadly intestinal disease, and it's very, very rare. I was upset and scared because I didn't know what was going on. I eventually had to tell my principal at school about my sickness. I was missing so much school, I thought they were going to kick me out. But my principal understood everything, and he let my teacher Miss Reeves sell purple SMA awareness shirts around the entire school. A lot of people were wearing them. I saw people wearing them every day. I was so happy that so many people cared about me. But now that I have this super rare disease, what does this mean? Is there a cure? Well, my doctor told me that she could perform a surgery to possibly fix it, but it was very, very risky, and I could possibly come out worse than I was before. But I decided to take this chance, so I finished up my junior year of high school, and on June 20th, 2012, I had my SMA surgery. Now, random thing you might want to know, also on June 20th, I uploaded the series finale of Mario and Luigi's Stupid and Dumb Adventures, and I ended it in a way that if I were to die in surgery, the videos would constantly loop and you would always remember me. But I didn't die in surgery, yay! But something did go wrong in recovery. See, I was only supposed to spend a week and a half in the hospital, but I ended up spending like 33 days instead. This is because my stomach would not wake up from anesthesia. It was like in a very deep sleep. Uh, wake up, stomach, wake up. I had to lay in the hospital bed with a tube down my nose, and it went all the way to my stomach so it could drain the bile from my stomach, and I couldn't eat anything for a whole month. I was only being fed through an IV and a pick line. I was in living hell. I hated my life. I couldn't do anything but lay in the hospital bed, and I was in so much pain from the tube down my nose and from recovering from the big surgery that I just had. I, I just wanted to die. My mom and grandma stayed by my side every day, and so did my girlfriend. I really did not want to live anymore because at the time, I didn't know when I was going home. They said it could take weeks, it could take months, and I did not want to be in the hospital that long. I told my mom that I'd rather be dead than lay in this hospital bed all day with a tube down my nose. But then I met this boy named Jamarcus. Now, I was 17 when I had this surgery, so I was still considered a minor, so I was in the kids' critical section of the hospital. So that means I was near the kids who had cancer and very horrible sicknesses. And Jamarcus was this kid who was about my age, and he had leukemia, and leukemia is a very, very bad, incurable cancer. Anyway, Jamarcus had been in the hospital for about two years. Yes, two years without going home. He was very, very sick. But every night in the hallway, he would tell my grandma that he was praying for me. And every night my grandma would say, hey, there's this kid next door that's praying for you. He really wants to meet you. And I said, no, I don't want to meet anyone. I don't feel good. I don't feel like meeting anyone. I, I, I hate life. And finally, one day I was feeling a little bit better. And I said, hey, you can tell that Jamarcus kid he can come over if he wants to. So one day he came over and he talked to me and he told me about how he got diagnosed with cancer two years ago and how he just knew that one day he would get better and one day he would beat cancer and he was so happy and excited about living life even though he was suffering with cancer and even though he was stuck in this hospital for so long, he was just so glad to be alive and I'm sitting here complaining about being here for like a two weeks so far and I just felt really bad about myself. I didn't understand how someone could be so full of life even though they were given so much suffering. He told me how God is going to help me and him make it out of this hospital and we'd both live amazing lives. Jamarcus gave me hope and strength to fight and just to never give up. As the month went by, I got better and Jamarcus got worse. Before I knew it, I was going home. I was free, but Jamarcus was still stuck in the hospital. I told Jamarcus I would visit him all the time. I even went and bought him some Dr. Dre Beats headphones because he loved music and he didn't really have that much stuff. 
and I thought he deserved them. When I got out of the hospital, I told my mom that I wanted to go get my license and get my dream car. And yes, I was 17 and I did not have my license. Don't make fun of me. So I went and took my driving test and I passed because I'm a beast. And the next day, I went to the Chevrolet dealership and I bought myself a Victory Red Camaro. I was the happiest person in the world. My surgery mostly fixed my problems. And I was about to start my senior year of high school. And I had an awesome car. My life was going amazing. Until everything flipped. I started failing all my classes because I was too cool for school. I was full of myself. I acted like I was the king of the world. This caused me to lose my friends. Me and my girlfriend broke up. I stopped doing videos and that caused problems with me and Lavelle. And I slowly stopped visiting Jamarcus because I was always busy going out and doing my own things. And then one day my mom told me that Jamarcus wasn't doing well. That he was actually getting a lot worse. So me and my mom went and visited him and... This was not the same Jamarcus I remember seeing. He was not happy. He wasn't full of life. He just laid there. He could barely even talk. And it killed me to see him go from this really happy person into someone who just looked sad and looked like they didn't want to live anymore. I told him that we still had to have a party together and he still had to get better and we still were supposed to be friends and go do all this cool stuff together. But Jamarcus told me that he would be going home soon, and I didn't understand what he was talking about because he looked really bad. He didn't look like he was going to be going home anytime soon. But a few days later, Jamarcus died. He did go home. He went to heaven where he didn't have to suffer anymore. And this, this killed me. I, I wanted him to get better. I wanted him to get out of the hospital and be free just like me. And I spoke at his funeral, and I even helped carry the casket, even though I'm the weakest person on earth. Uh, I started to go to church after he died because I wanted to get closer to God. I wanted to be exactly the way he was. He was so happy and he was so close to God. I got baptized on November 4th, 2013. It felt great to go to church all the time. But I slowly stopped going and I found myself messing up again. I stopped focusing on YouTube. I even got my first speeding ticket. And it was a bad speeding ticket. I was going 66 miles per hour in a 30 mile per hour zone. And that's 30 miles per hour over the speed limit. So uh, in Florida, you get arrested for going that fast. But I almost got arrested that night. Thank God I didn't. The cop decided to just give me a court date instead, where the judge gave me a $500 speeding ticket. And she said if she ever saw me in court again, she would put me in jail. So I never speed and I never break the law ever again. After that, I realized I need to get my life back on track. I needed to focus on YouTube and I needed to focus on school because I was still failing all my classes and I wanted to graduate my class because I didn't want to be that stupid loser who drops out of high school because I'm just a stupid person. So I kicked it into high gear. I made up my grades. I got back with Chili. We went to prom and I finished my senior year with all A's and B's and I graduated Tate High School on June 4th, 2013. And after I graduated, I decided that, you know what, I'm going to start focusing all my attention on YouTube because my YouTube career is blowing up. I hit 100,000 subscribers in 2013. I hit 100 million video views in 2013. 2013 was a huge year for me. I accomplished so much stuff and I did so many things that I never thought I would ever do. I even went to New York City and I've always wanted to go to New York City ever since I was little. But thanks to you guys, I was able to go. I went with my girlfriend, Chili, and I even got to meet Jason Derulo. And if you didn't know, Jason Derulo is my favorite singer of all time, man. I got to meet him and it was just so cool and I got to see the World Trade Center and I just got to do so much cool stuff and I would not be able to do any of the stuff I did in my life without you guys. I, your, your support and the love of my fans is what keeps me going. I'm so glad that I've had the love and dedication to, of all my fans and I, I don't know where I would be at in life if I didn't have y'all. I, I went from having two subscribers to having 126,000 subscribers. I went from having like, what, one view to 100 million views. I, I don't know. I would never have imagined where I'm at right now. And I'm just, I'm so excited. And I, I want to make the best videos for y'all. So that's why in 2014, I started the year off by uploading a video every week. And I'm going to keep doing this as long as I can. It's just an amazing job, and it's an amazing way to, to make a living. And I just want to thank all of y'all again for help letting me have this amazing experience. And y'all are all amazing fans. I just, I don't, I didn't even know what to say right now. But all I know is that it's taken me so long to record this video, and my hand hurts because I'm drawing so much. So, my name is Super Mario Logan. Thank you for watching my Draw My Life video, new plush videos, uh, I guess later this week, because this doesn't count as a plush video. And I'll see y'all later.